Hey there, YouTube. What happens when a bank goes belly up and who comes to the rescue? Buckle up because we're diving into the story of First Republic's takeover by JP Morgan Chase after regulators shut it down. You're in for a wild ride, so let's get started. First Republic, a once thriving regional bank, found itself in hot water after its efforts to stay afloat. This led to the third major bank failure of 2023. JP Morgan Chase swooped in to save the day and agreed to acquire First Republic absorbing its deposits and a significant chunk of its assets. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, chimed in, saying they'd be sharing the transaction's losses with JP Morgan. But wait, what's the FDIC? For those not in the know, the FDIC is a government agency that helps maintain stability and public confidence in the nation's financial system. They protect depositors by insuring their money in banks and thrift institutions. Now, back to to the juicy details. First Republic's collapse is the second largest bank failure in U.S. history, even surpassing the failure of Silicon Valley Bank back in March. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon said the government invited them to step up, and we did. This superhero move aims to minimize costs to the deposit insurance fund. Hey, before we continue, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more financial adventures. First Republic shares hit an all-time low after disclosing a sharp rise in asset outflow and a 41% drop in net deposits. This happened despite a group of large banks injecting $30 billion in deposits to boost depositor confidence and to prevent a run on the bank. The failure of First Republic raises concerns about a possible contagion in the banking sector. Now, JP Morgan's takeover of First Republic isn't without its challenges. Due to regulatory restrictions, JP Morgan's size and existing share of the U.S. deposit base would typically prevent it from expanding via acquisition. However, desperate times call for desperate measures, and in this case, the government stepped in to make it happen. The acquisition will see JP Morgan take over First Republic's assets, including about $173 billion of loans, $30 billion of securities, and $92 billion in deposits. JP Morgan and the FDIC agreed to share the burden of losses and potential recoveries on the firm's single family and commercial loans. In the end, JP Morgan expects to recognize a one-time gain of $2.6 billion from the transaction and incur a $2 billion in related restructuring costs over the next 18 months. So what does all this mean for First Republic employees and clients? Well, according to the CEOs of JP Morgan's Consumer and Community Banking Unit, JP Morgan will oversee the acquired business and extend a warm welcome to First Republic employees and clients. And that, dear viewers, is the roller coaster tale of First Republic's takeover by JP Morgan Chase. What are your thoughts on this whole banking failure? Do you think there will be more in the future? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more financial news. We'll see you on the next vid.